Curves are used extensively in surface modeling as trajectories, boundaries, and sections. In preparation for my video series on surfacing, especially sweeps, I'm going to show you how to create a few different kinds of datum curves. And in this video, we'll take a look at creating a datum curve using the curve from equation method. Also, I'm a bit of a math nerd. I write for PTC's MathCAD blog. Please check it out if you get a chance. So when I click on the command, we get the dashboard for the feature, and you can define your equation in terms of Cartesian coordinates, cylindrical coordinates, or spherical coordinates. In this video, I'm going to use Cartesian coordinates, but in another video, I'll create some neat curves using cylindrical coordinates. And the reference tab is in red because I need to specify the reference coordinate system that I want to use. And you can pick the coordinate system that you want, like the default coordinate system, either out of the model tree or the graphics area. And the most important part of the dashboard here is the equation button. And when I click on that, I get this little help over here that explains that I'm going to write my parametric equations in terms of x, y, and z. And there is a fourth variable, t. By default, t goes from a value of 0 to 1 over the range of evaluation. In earlier versions than what I'm using, I'm doing this in Creo Parametric 4.0, you did not have control over the T variable. I forget when they made that change. I think it was in Creo Parametric 3.0 when they updated the curve from equation dashboard to the modern interface. So here I'm going to write my equation. And in the equation editor, which is the same as the relations editor, I like to define variables that I'm going to use. And in this case here, I'm going to start off by creating an ellipse. And so I'm going to create some variables to control my major and minor axis. So let's use A is equal to 25 and B is equal to 25. Now let's write our equations for X, Y, and Z. X is going to be equal to A times and the equation for an ellipse in the parametric format is the cosine function. And then we're going to use our t independent variable. And as I mentioned, t goes from 0 to 1 by default. So to go through an entire revolution, I'm going to multiply t times 360. And for the y variable, that's going to be equal to b times, and this will be the sine function of t times 360. By the way, when I write my different relations in here, I like to use a lot of spaces to make it easy to read. You don't, you don't have to use all the spaces that I am using. And if I want this to be in the z equals 0 plane, I don't have to type in an equation for z. It's just going to assume that z is equal to 0. If I wanted it to be on a different plane, I could change that value. But this is good. If you want to double check, you can verify your relations. And then click the OK button. And here we can see our ellipse that is, oh, actually, let's hit the check mark. There we go. And we can see that we have our ellipse created. Let's edit definition. And I go to the equations. And right now I have A and B with the same value. So when A and B are equal, the major axis and the minor axis are the same. So that ends up being a circle. If we change this to a value of 10 and then hit the OK button, you can see that now we have something that does indeed look a little more elliptical. Let me turn off my plane display so you can see the curve over here. And again, I didn't define a z value, so it's at z equals zero. Let's play around with this and change our z value. So if I go to my equation button, then I can say let's have z equal to 5 times t. And I'll click OK. And so 
the z value increases so that we have a disjoint in our ellipse. Let's go back to the equation button. And now I'm going to make this a little fancier. All right, let's have this be sine of t times 360. And so this will end up giving it a sine curve. And I'm going to multiply this by, let's use 16. And now when I click the OK button, here you see that the Z value changes using the sine curve. So it ends up making this wavy shape over here. So you've got a lot of different controls that you can do over here. Uh, last thing I want to mention for this one, let's go to the properties tab and you can use that to change the name of the feature which I always recommend. So that's the first one. I'm going to do four more other kinds of curves in this video. Next we'll take a look at doing parabolas. So to make this easy to see let's hide the first one that we created. Now again let's go to curve or excuse me the datum overflow menu then curve and curve from equation. Let's use the same reference coordinate system I will click on the equation button and you'll notice that since I already used the command once I don't get the help anymore and so let's use a value for my parabola I'm going to use a controlling variable called a and for the parabola x is going to be equal to a times t and I want to square this so I'll use shift 6 to get the caret and squared and then y is going to be equal to 2 times a times t and I'm not going to define a z variable let's click OK and you can see that here we have part of the sine curve over here if I change the value the from value to negative 1 there you see the other side of the curve if I make it even bigger, let's go from negative 10 to a value of 10. That really looks like a parabola now. And I'm going to change the from to a value of 0. I just want 0 to 10. Let's hit the check mark. And we have it visualized there in the model. I am going to turn on my datum plane display. Just to show you that if I have this curve over here, I can now use it as the basis for a sketch. Let me click on the datum plane called front, go into sketch mode. Then I can use the project command and just select the curve that I've used. And I'm going to throw in a horizontal center line. And then if I hold down the right mouse button while still selected, I could designate it as the axis of revolution. Hit the check mark. And now when I click on the revolve button with the sketch still selected, here I'm creating a surface feature that is a parabola. So again, that's how you can use it. I find this especially useful when you are working in aerospace, when you use a lot of different equations for defining uh, aerodynamic shapes. So that is good. Let's hide this. For the next curve that I am going to create, this one is going to be a helix. So let's go to datum, curve, curve from equation. Again, select my coordinate system reference. And with the equation for a helix, it's going to be very uh, so, somewhat similar to what I did for the ellipse. Let's go to our equation button. And again, I'll do that variable A. Let's give it a value of 10. And X is going to be equal to A times cosine of T times 360. And Y is going to be equal to A times sine of our T independent variable times 360 and here we're going to use z is going to be equal to let me throw in another variable here let's use again I like using these variables inside of the equations just so I can 
get control over different things. And so for the z, let's use a value of 5 times t. And I will click OK. Let's hit the check mark. So there you can see our helix in here. Let me turn on my turn off my data planes for a second. So we have our single helical loop over here. If I go back to the curve and edit definition, here's another situation whereby if I change this from 0 to from 0 to 1 to 0 to 5 now I get 5 loops inside of here change this to 10 and I get 10 loops in my helix and so on so that's good for the helix now I'm going to do two last weird curves one is again this lemnus gates I might be mispronouncing that and um, the other one is something called a torus knot and these are a little bit complicated equations so I'm going to start off the curves and I'm just going to copy and paste from a notepad where I already have the equations written out okay so for this lemnus gates or lemnus gates, maybe it's that how it's called uh, let's create our curve from equation and select our reference coordinate system and with the equation button here oops can I minimize I'm just gonna copy this that I have in my word pad so that you don't get bored watching me type an equation so you can use comment lines inside of your equation just like with a relation there I have my a variable and here you can see the function that's used here and I'm just have z equal to zero so with this lemnus gate let me click the OK button and let's go back to here and so it's sort of like this infinity symbol sort of like this uh, figure eight symbol in the model so I think that looks kind of cool and for the last one that I'm going to show you is something called a torus knot uh, something that that folds in on itself and so let's hide this one and do another curve from equation select our reference coordinate system and let me minimize grab my torus knot equation here you know in this one I'm using five different variables uh, in the model go to the equation button let's type it in here and so we've got five different variables and there we see our complicated functions for X Y and Z and then when I click OK and hit the check mark here you can see let me change my spin center find it trying to find a vertex on here I don't know where the vertex is but anyhow here we have this curve that spins on itself and it's kind of hard to see because it's a 2d curve uh, or excuse me a 3d curve projected on a 2d computer screen so to make it easier I'm actually going to create a sweep here let me select my curve and for my section for this let's just create a circle let's use a diameter of two and hit the check mark hit the check mark to finish up my feature and let me see if i can get my spin center i have a map key oops did i type it Let me do it the manual method. Uh, if I go to the reorient command, change from orient to reference to preferences, pointer vertex, there we go. Let's grab the spinner center right over there. So here you can see this is a torus knot, and start and ending is the same, and it loops, loops through itself. And what's cool about the torus knot is that you can change the values that you have for it. So let's edit definition of the curve and go to the equation if I change this p value here from a value of 2 change that one 
uh, to a value of 1 and this other variable, let's change this to a value of 10. Then click the OK button. You can see how it doesn't loop through itself anymore. And there is our torus knot. But again, let's undo. And there it is. So again, you can have a lot of fun with math and doing curves from equations inside of Creole Parametric. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolewindchill.com. If you learned something in this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.